The latest release of VS Code is here and it's packed full of brand new features for productivity, great new enhancements to chat, agent mode, new APIs for extension creators, coding agent enhancements, accessibility updates, and so much more that we know you're going to love. So let's check it out. Let's get started with chat. And the first thing I want to talk about are brand new models that you can integrate into your workflow today, including Claude Sonnet 4.5 and GPT-5 Codex. They're available in the model selector, so bring it up, select one, and let it rip. Now, you may have also noticed some brand new customizations in the empty state of the chat, including recent chat history and suggested actions. Chat history shows me the most recent chats, and we can just go ahead and select one and pick up exactly where we left off. You can enable it by right-clicking and simply selecting chat history. And also, don't sleep on the little gear up here for configuring chat settings and different chat infrastructure, such as prompt files, instructions, tool sets, modes, MCP servers, and even the availability to generate agent instructions with one click. These are super powerful, enabling you to guide the model to return better results based on your coding standards, project integrations and technologies, and a lot more. So definitely give that a go today if you haven't set up your agent instructions yet. All right, let's talk about these suggested actions. What are they and how do you get them here? Well, these are different prompts that I use often when starting a new chat, like doing planning and creating reusable components. Well, where do they exist? Well, they exist over in my prompts folder here. We can see them, but how did I get them from prompts over into suggested actions? Well, if you right click on the empty state, you can configure it. This will filter down the settings to show you the history and also prompt file recommendations. You can set these up for the user or for the workspace, which I've done here in my .vs code folder and settings.json. As specified in this case, the most common two that I'm using here for planning fast and creating reusable components. But what are these prompts? Well, create reusable components is a full agent mode setup here, helping me create reusable components and plan fast uses a custom plan mode here to help me plan and iterate faster through ideas. We can see if I go down here that the agent ask and edit are available, but also plan mode is here. And that is because under chat modes, I've set up plan.chatmode.md. This is a custom chat mode that I've created here to help me research and draft implementation plans. It uses a bunch of different tools that are built in, but also ones from extensions like here, the GitHub pull request extension and the GitHub MCP server. And we're now using fully qualified names with the tools, which is brand new for not only extensions, but also MCP servers. So for example, if you open up and you were to add a get issue, for example, here, we now get a blue squiggly saying that you can use the fully qualified name. So you don't get any tool conflicts. You also get an action over here to update it automatically. If you use configure tools, you can select them. And when you hit okay, it'll automatically use the pre-qualified names for you, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and use one of these suggested actions. I'm going to do plan fast. And I'm going to iterate on a new idea that I really want to add to this application, which is the ability to select sort of different files and then select between them. So I'm going to go ahead and send this off. And the first thing that we'll notice is that it will automatically change to plan mode and the model that I've selected. And this is really cool. The chain of thought is now being updated in real time. Previously, I would just see thinking or working here, but I can now see exactly what the model is thinking. And that will really help me debug in real time what it was going on. So here, if I drop this down, I can see the full chain of thought and thinking that the model was going through. I can also see that it was using a reference here to agents.md, which is also available. So now we're going to go ahead and have it go ahead and do some additional research and multiple things are happening. It's research, it's working, and it's giving me updates in real time as it helps me generate this plan. So let's go ahead and let it work. Okay, so it's generated a full plan here for me for adding CSV source switching and uploading here for me. Now it's in my plan mode, so it may ask me some additional questions as well or specify some edge cases. But when I'm ready, I could toggle it back over to agent mode or I could click the brand new delegate to the GitHub Copilot coding agent. When I tap on that, it's now going to use the full context of the entire chat here to delegate the entire task off to the coding agent. This is really powerful. And if the context is very large, VS Code will automatically summarize and condense the information to fit the window. Here, it will start the delegating of the coding agent, and we'll see a pull request open for us automatically as the coding agent works in the background for me. 
Here it is. Pull request is open and we can see the coding agent getting to work, setting up the project and it'll start implementing this right away. I can now go over into my chat sessions and here we can see that chat session ready to go. I can bring it up at any time now or later. Additionally, if I want to ask it to do and delegate some new work to the coding agent, I can click on this new button and delegate work right away. and It'll spin up just like that. So I can monitor my active local sessions and my remote coding agent sessions as well, as well without leaving VS Code. And there is tons more built into this release, including tons of enhancements to bring your own key for custom models. Agent mode can auto reply to prompts in the terminal. And additionally, there's brand new keyboards and accessibility features to help you manage your chats. Let's talk about ways that we as developers can extend chat in agent mode to provide additional context and actions that the model can perform. We can configure tools. So for example, built-in tools into VS Code, like editing files, fetching, scaffolding new projects, running terminal commands, and a lot more. Extensions can also provide additional tools as well such as the GitHub pull requests extension, which allows us to grab the active pull requests, open pull requests, and delegate to the coding agent. I could install additional extensions, or I could configure remote or local model context protocol servers, or MCP servers, that provide additional tools and prompts and more for us. If I go now into the extensions, we can see my installed extensions, but I can also now see the MCP servers gallery. This shows us recommended servers from the GitHub MCP registry. I can browse through them and read about them, such as Figma, Azure, Stripe, Notion, Neon, and a lot more. And I can even search by saying at MCP and search for GitHub, for example. This will show me the information about the MCP server, and I can one-click install. In this case for GitHub, it's gonna ask me to go ahead and authenticate. It'll use the built-in broker here, and I'll select my account. And now we can see that I have brand new tools available. Not only the built-in, but the ones coming through the MCP server for GitHub. So for example, I could easily come in and say, show me the open pull requests. This is now gonna go off, look that I have the GitHub MCP server and use it to actually pull it from it automatically and then summarize it back down. That's super duper nifty, so I can automatically create new issues, open pull requests, get information, and have the model summarize it for me. Now, one of the most powerful new features that were added in this release was the ability for extension creators to contribute prompts, modes, and instructions. Here, I have a extension from Harold on the team that is agent memory. It implements Claude's memory tool for language model agents. So that way we can store memories that can be used later on. So let's create a new chat here. And the first thing that I wanna show off is if I come in, and let's say I wanna add a new feature for syntax highlighting for my blog posts here. If I fire this off, the first thing that we'll note is that there are some tools here that are available coming from that. We can see memory to store this locally. Now automatically it's gonna say, do I wanna store this and take a look at it? We'll go ahead and allow it. Now on top of this, this new tool is available, but if I also come in and hit slash, we can see all of the available prompts that are coming in such as remember, memory summarize, and memory compress coming from that extension. And in addition to that, if we also go down into the mode, we can see that there is a memory manager mode that is coming from that extension. This mode does not exist inside of my .github slash chat modes because it is coming directly from the extension. And those are just some of the ways that you can easily now extend and optimize working with chat agent modes from MCP servers and extensions. The last feature I want to show off is the ability to resolve merge conflicts with AI. Here, I've been implementing a new feature to do fuzzy search for the text. But if I take a look at the graph, I can see that someone has pushed to main a new change in this file. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up from main. So let me go ahead and do that now and see if there's any merge conflicts. And unfortunately, yeah, there's merge conflicts. So now I can go ahead and tap on this file. I can see that I can resolve in the merge editor, or I can use this new button, resolve conflicts with AI. So I'm gonna start a new chat. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that button to resolve conflicts with AI. Now, the context needed between both branches is being sent over into agent mode to help resolve the merge conflicts. So here, it identifies a merge conflict in the file. It's gonna examine the conflict and resolve it for me automatically. It identified the changes between the different branches 
and it's applied the patch for me automatically. So now it's going to go ahead and update any of the logic that is needed in the file. Okay, it looks like it's gone ahead and resolved that merge conflict. I can keep the changes, review them, and commit them into my source control, and I'm good to go. Resolve Merge Conflicts with AI is available in preview today, so give it a try, and we can't wait to hear what you think. So give us your feedback. All right, there you have. Those are just some of the updates in the latest release of VS Code. Be sure to browse all of the amazing release notes, documentation updates, and so much more, and let us know what your favorite features are in this release in the comments below. And with that, happy coding. Okay.